Hi everybody and welcome to Frank's 3D Shop. In this video we'll look at how to install Octoprint and configure it for your network on the Raspberry Pi 3. So we will install Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi and I have ordered a kit of a Raspberry Pi from Amazon. I'm gonna put the link below so that you can have the same kit. So come closer and take a look. So this is the kit that I have ordered. Let's take a look at what's inside. So first you have the Raspberry Pi 3. Instructions. Who needs instructions? So here it is. Then you have some heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. Three heat sink with some double sided tape. So the big one goes on the big chip. The small one goes on the small chip. That's it. And the flat one goes on the cheap chip underneath. So that's it for the heat sinks. A USB cable, a case, and you have access for the SD card. And one Raspberry Pi, and then you have a small power supply, 2.5 amps on 5 volt, which is good. And this is power. And you have an output HDMI, some USB, an Ethernet port, and that's about it. And some rubber feet. it and last thing is in an SD card so a 16 gig card that we are going to set up in the computer let's go okay so first thing we search for octoprint on Google then we go to the octoprint.org and I'm gonna do this on the Mac so it's gonna be a little different with a Windows PC so what you do is download the Octopi latest version, that's it, and you click on the, after the first instruction here, unzip the file, you click on like any other Pi, Raspberry Pi image, and then you have the instruction how to do the SD card, either on Linux, Mac or Windows. So I'm going to choose OS X, Apple, and what you do is find the disk number for your SD card reader. So I already have my SD card inside the plug-in to the reader on the computer. I'm going to start disk utility and find my SD card, which is here. One bit of warning, 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 warning. Be really sure that you have the right number for the device, so device five. Be really, really sure that it's your SD card reader. This is important. If you don't use the right disk and yours won't be number five, you have to check for your SD card reader. You have to use your disk utility and find the disk number, the device number for your SD card reader. If you don't, you can damage your computer, format completely your computer. If you want to be really, really sure, make a backup before doing any of this, just to be extra careful. I have two backups 
at all times. So I'm not too worried about this. I would lose the video that I'm doing now. But again, warning, be careful. And it says up here with the right amount of space that I was expect expecting and make sure you have the right device number. Warning, make sure, make a backup. I'm not responsible for any mistake you can make. You have been warned, take a good look, be sure, verify three times, write it down on the wall, I don't know, but, but make sure you have the right number or else you can do some really bad thing to your computer. So mine is disk five. And then you open up a terminal and what I do is I do the command that is shown below. And here you have to, so what you do is you go into your download folder, unzip the file, it will give you the image. The easy way is just to take the image that you've unzipped and just drag it on the window and it types in the path and name for the, the image and then output f would be slash dev slash and that since I'm at disk 5 so it hard disk 5 conv sync so same thing as the command here but I've put in the path to my image with dragging it on the window and I use the hard disk with number five that I've that I've got from the disk utility. Everything is fine. Type in my password. The source busy. Oh, because we have to unmount first. So they say that we have to go into disk utility, select the SD card and unmount the SD card. That's it. Then go back to terminal, do the command again, and now it should write to the SD card. So let's wait for it to finish. So when it's finished, you're gonna have a boot partition on your SD card. And this is where we are going to modify the octopi network.txt so you go into that folder and you modify that file you remove the hashtags in front of those three settings not the first one and then you enter your ssid or the name of your wi-fi network and you put in your password so if you do that change that file with the SSID, the name of your Wi-Fi router and the password, it will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi. So you don't have to do any other settings. So you take the SD card that you have configured for your Wi-Fi, you just slide it in. And all you have to do is plug in like this. You see here, it's flashing. So it is connecting. And now we go back to the computer to connect to it wirelessly. So if you did everything right, now you can just open up a browser window and type in octopi, octopi.local. And you should be greeted greeted with a setup wizard. So we just do next, choose a username, a password, and push the keep access control enable. Yeah, save password. Next. I don't usually do a slicing on the Octoprint because uh, I want to see everything in Cura and be sure that everything would be fine. So next, give it a name. 
like a new 3D printer. Next, and finished. That's it. And then reload the page. And now you are, you are connected to your new Octoprint. And the first thing it asks is to update itself. So let's do that, proceed, and wait for it. So it says it will be restarted. Reload the page. It's gonna take a few moments to reboot. Oops, still starting, starting up. Ah, nice. Ready to serve. Reloading page. So it's doing it on itself. Good. So smart of to print. Cool. Configure, configure the connectivity check. So you can enable this. Uh, it's going to check if it has a, a connection to the internet using the Google's DNS. So why not? Next. Yes, in the new version, it is going to disable automatically or blacklist automatically offending plugins and processing. So that's a good thing. Enable, finish. And we are ready. I don't have a printer connected right now, but, but that's about it. Now you can add some plugins and everything, but I would just have to connect a serial port to the printer and connect. So let's try this just for the fun of it with the new printer, even if it's not uh, finished, uh, just to have something to connect to. So let's try to connect to this, com this new printer. And it's connected! Cool! So we would be able to control... Yeah, it works. I don't have a webcam yet, but I will do another video explaining how to do the webcam streaming. So that's it. You can now use, use Octoprint to print. You just you can just upload files here choose something that that came from cura then choose it and print and you can go into cura also and you can add in the new cura 3.2 you can add the plugin for octoprint and use the ip address and this api key be able to print directly directly from cura to octoprint so that's it for me, guys. I think it's the easiest way on a Mac to set up a Raspberry Pi Octoprint server onto Wi-Fi. I think it's the easiest way. Um, there is other ways. There is web pages that describes how to do this, but I think it's the easiest way, at least on the Mac. And it should be similar on a Windows PC. It's just the part where you copy the image onto the SD card that is different, but I don't have a PC, so I cannot show you it to you. <laughs> so that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Comments are really welcome just below. Subscribe to my channel. Push that little bell if you want to be notified of new videos coming from me. And see you in the next video. Ciao, bye!